Good morning. Uh, welcome to this session, uh, Rebuilding Fukushima Lessons for the World. Uh, my name is Yoichi Funabashi, uh, Chairman of the Rebuild Japan Initiative Foundation, Japanese think tank. I'll be moderating this session. I'm delighted to introduce uh, Masao uh, Uchibori, the governor of Fukushima yes. Prefecture. Thank you very much for joining us. Yes. Uh, it's an honor and a rare opportunity to talk with him. And uh, <coughs> I hope that uh, we will uh, hear, uh, I'm sure we will hear a lot of uh, illuminating points and insights. Uh, so I'm really uh, looking forward to this discussion. Um, the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear disaster uh, was undoubtedly uh, Japan's uh, greatest crisis uh, since the end of the Pacific War. Uh, we are still feeling that effects today. Uh, in March 2011, three nuclear reactors suffered core meltdown. Uh, radioactive materials uh, leaked into the air and polluted that uh, seawater. This discharge uh, caused unprecedented evacuation, uh, leaving more than 160,000 people dislocated. We are approaching that 50th anniversary uh, in the March. Uh, still about 100,000 people are unable to return to their homes and communities. Uh, to be sure that disaster hit Fukushima hard and that uh, effects are lasting. But the people of Fukushima are making heroic uh, steps forward. Uh, whether it's in terms of uh, cleaning, cleaning up that physical uh, mess uh, left behind or the ruin caused to the reputation of the local products revitalizing the local economy and reestablishing the communities. Fukushima is rebuilding. I uh, sat down on this stage uh, here at the World Economic Forum four years ago uh, with the former Prime Minister of Japan, Naoto Kan. Uh, we discussed about uh, nuclear safety and uh, crisis management and the lessons learned for Japan as well as the world. Today, I want to talk with Governor Uchibori on the very crucial and relevant subject of how Fukushima is rebuilding and lessons we can learn. So, Governor Uchibori, thank you very much for joining once again. The floor is yours. Okay. Thank you very much for coming to the session of Rebuilding <coughs> Fukushima Lessons for the World. My name is Masao Uchibori, the governor of Fukushima Prefecture. I'd like to express my gratitude to everyone at the World Economic Forum for giving me this opportunity to speak today. It almost has been five years since the Great East Japan earthquake. During the period, we have received so much support and help from all over the world. Thanks to that support, Fukushima has been moving step by step towards revitalization. I'd like to express my appreciation for your solidarity, encouragement, and friendship. Today, I would like to explain how Fukushima is rebuilding itself and introduce the current Fukushima working towards a brighter future. It is a limited time, but I hope you will learn a lot about Fukushima. Thank you very much. Uh, 
I would like to ask uh, Governor Uchiboni to make a uh, pre presentation. I will ask him to limit uh, to uh, 10 minutes or so, so that we should uh, have more time to get engaged uh, questions and answers. Thank you. So first of all, the message I would like to convey to everyone, there are two main messages. First of all, five years have passed since the disaster. The positive aspects that we see in Fukushima, the everyday activities that we're carrying out towards reconstruction. The second point I'd like to point out is some of the challenges that we are still facing. Five years have elapsed and some progress has been made. However, still in Fukushima, there are still many challenges and issues that we face today. So I would like to touch upon these two aspects today. I would like to convey what is happening to you frankly on the ground. First of all, let's look back at the events. In, in March 2011, we had experienced a multiple faceted disaster, three facets, in other words. First, there was magnitude 9.0 earthquake struck the region. It was a huge earthquake. The second was the huge tsunami, the huge waves that struck the region. The third was the accident that took place in the nuclear power plants. So these three multiple disasters happened in sync, in sync, in tandem, and struck the region. And five years now, still, we feel the scars, we feel the impacts of these events. So in terms of looking at Fukushima, looking at the whole area, 1%, about 7% of the region remains areas as designated as evacuated areas in these areas. People cannot live. They cannot lead their daily lives. They cannot enter the, the, this area. On the other hand, 93% of the remaining area are, is not designated as an evacuated area. Normal people are leading normal lives here. So sometimes, People think that the whole of the Fukushima prefecture is suffering, but that's sadly not the case today. And that's the first point I would like to convey to you. Next, the nuclear power plant accident and the disaster uh, was compounded by the earthquake and the, the tsunami. And as Mr. Funabashi just mentioned, 100,000 people still are forced to live as evacuees. At its peak, there were over 160,000 people who had to flee the region and live as evacuees. So compared to that situation, we can perhaps say that the situation has improved slightly. However, from our perspective, even five years after these events, still 100,000 people are forced to continue to live as evacuees. This is a very difficult and challenging reality that we face in our prefecture. This is the second point I'd like to convey. Also, the negative impacts that we suffered and the blows that we suffered, of course, this has had an impact in terms of our, the industry in our region, first of all, in terms of agriculture, forestry, fishery, also in terms of other commercial activities, tourism also. So the whole of the industry of the region have been affected by the earthquakes or by the nuclear accident. So there have been negative impacts all around. So how do we rebuild and put the region back on its feet? in such a situation. This is a major challenge that we face. First of all, to uh, address the nuclear power accident, there are three uh, um, undertakings that we're doing. First of all, we have the decontamination efforts. We have to get rid of the radioactive material as much as possible and to provide a safe environment for our residents as much as possible. This is the decontamination aspect of our activities at the a moment in time, the local government and the prefecture level and the central government are all working together and decontamination efforts are progressing steadily. The second undertaking that we need to do is to ensure that we, can, uh, we have food safety and food security on the ground. Fukushima is well known for its very good food and produced lots of agricultural products. And after the disaster, whether it be rice, whether it be vegetable, whether it be fruits, whether it be live, uh, livestock, we need to take measures to ensure that there is safety, or we can guarantee safety in terms of these products when it uh, comes to the farmland that produces rice or vegetables. We carry out decontamination efforts, and by doing so, we ensure that the goods produced there are not contaminated by radiation. And we also block these uh, the radiation waves from being absorbed by the products. So 
we are carrying out a very comprehensive monitoring and having a system in place which ensures safety. So by carrying out these activities one by one steadily, whether it be rice, whether it be vegetable, whether it be fruits, or whether it be livestock, by carrying out such efforts, we ensure that products made in Fukushima do not exceed the allowed levels in terms of radiation. So we must continue these efforts as we move forward, and this is certainly the reality that we are facing at present. The third important undertaking is to ensure that the residents of our prefecture are healthy. So we carry out surveys, we carry out investigations to uh, in identify what the situation is in terms of people's health. We focus in particular on younger people, and we continue uh, to look at the situation today, and it also towards the future, we look to their health to ensure their welfare. This activity is taking place on by the central government and as well as by the local level. Also, if I can move on to community and also in terms of industry, one important point here is that in the evacuated areas, we need to ensure that special care is given to those evacuees. 100,000 people are suffering mentally, physically, psychologically. So we need to be able to provide housing for these people and housing blocks, apartments for these people where they can live safely. Also, in terms of their mental welfare, we are taking as many pledges as possible to ensure that they feel safe and sound. And also, in terms of industry, there are two measures that we are currently undertaking. First is looking at the existing industries. So those industries that existed before the uh, disaster, we uh, need to rebuild these for, for agriculture, commerce, tom tourism. Etc. These industries suffer greatly as a result of the East Japan Great Disaster. So we need to put these industries back on its feet. So industrial revitalization is a, a very important f first aspect of the policy that we are undertaking. The second in important industrial policy, this is to foster new industries in the region. Fukushima Prefecture is suffering the burdens of the Great Disaster. And we want to, therefore, create a society that does not depend on nuclear power. This is the kind of society that we want to realize as we move forward. And in order to do so, what is important is to dramatically uh, bolster the region renewable energy industry. And also in terms of decommi decommissioning related to this, we need to really build on the robot industry. Robotics is going to be a very important aspect. Before even before the disaster, such in this, these uh, renewable energies, these were being promoted very actively, the, uh, geothermal and uh, biomass, also wind generation and solar power generation. All of these aspects were being addressed. We have a wide geographical area and we have uh, some lots of natural resources. So using these local natural resources, we had already been working on re renewables. We had this foundation before, even before the disaster, and after the disaster, we have introduced new initiatives. First of all, in the center of, of Fukushima, there is the city of Kodiyama. Here, we have set up an R&D center on renewables. And this is a, a, an R&D center which looks at new technology, renewables and renewable technology, as you all know. Still, there are still lots of rooms for improvement. There are lots of uh, improvements that still need to be made, first of all, in terms of the cost, they need to be brought down. Also, in terms of stability, it's not certainly sufficient at the moment. And also, as it is diffused electricity, and there are multiple sources of electricity, we have to combine them well together. So we need to address all these issues. So in this new R&D center, we look at such aspects. We also carry out research in new fields also. We want to be able to apply these technologies in real life. So and we want to be able to actually make these applicable, real commercialized activities. This is what, what one mission that we feel we need to address. Also, as a new initiative that we are currently doing, it is offshore wind farms. So rather than onshore, 18 kilometers out f from the coast, we have floating wind farms. And by doing so, we have we carry out great uh, windmills and we carry out uh, lots of fire generation. We had a two megawatt wind farm built last 
already. And a 7 megawatt world scale has the generation plant has been built in 2015. And this year, we are beginning a new project with a capacity of 5 megawatts. Such new wind farms will bolster our perspective outlook in terms of renewables. And finally, as we uh, look to pro make progress in terms of our reconstruction efforts, we need to really focus on the youngsters. We lost many things in the disaster. However, with the assistance from Japan, from the Japanese people and from uh, the outside world, we have made great strides and great efforts. And here, young people, we want them to be able to remain in the, or come back to Fukushima and, and become ad young adults and adults, responsible adults in our region. So there is a key word in terms of our research instruction. That is challenge. We have been put in an unprecedented, very difficult, challenging situation. And in order to overcome this challenging situation, business as usual, such an approach is not going to be effective. What we need to do is to have the spirit of one, addressing new challenges on a constant basis with the youngsters in our region. We will continue to face and address such challenges, and we will achieve this difficult challenge of carrying out reconstruction and revitalizing our region. So at Davos, this is the kind of message that I wanted to convey at Davos, and I'm very happy that I've had this opportunity to convey this message to you. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Well, thank you very much, uh, Governor Uchibori. Um, before asking the audience to uh, raise questions to you, uh, let me ask you a couple of questions first. Um, Hi. Could you let us know what you see uh, as the most uh, urgent task, or if I might use the word challenge, uh, which needs to be addressed in terms of progressing to the next step uh, to uh, rebuilding a normalcy? Well, thank you very much. For Fukushima, the most urgent uh, issue is to terminate and put a period to the accident of uh, Fukushima uh, power uh, plant. There are two aspects. One is to deal with the contaminated water and uh, to stop the outflow of contaminated water flowing the beneath uh, the uh, power plant. And the second is how to take out the debris of uh, melted core uh, in a safe manner over a long run. The first part for the contaminated water uh, outflow. It's not only for uh, Fukushima, but for Japan, it's the most urgent issue. The TEPCO and the country as a whole are exerting atmos to cope with uh, the contaminated water issue. And we would like to make sure that uh, we can ensure the stoppage of uh, leakage uh, in the course of this year using the steel solid uh, container. And uh, this is the most urgent challenge to achieve this and um, completely stop the leakage. Um, looking back over the past five years, uh, what would you say uh, the toughest uh, challenge then, uh, particularly uh, in, a, uh, in, in, in its attempt to uh, rebuild Fukushima. Well, indeed, there are so many tough challenges and very difficult to point one. But the issues so far and the issues uh, going forward, the uh, toughest challenge would be the issue of uh, rumors, reputation, and the memories fading away. Uh, the first issue, the Fukushima uh, is suffering from the unfounded misunderstanding, and that still sticks and lingers. And about the fading of memories, five years passed, and with the passage of time, the accident and the suffering of Fukushima would be things of the past and uh, fading away in people's memory. So there are these two aspects we have to cope with, and we have to keep fighting against that. 
So these two are maybe contrasting the uh, rumors remaining and the fading memories, but for Fukushima, these two are ongoing concurrently. So Fukushima would fight, uh, uh, fight against the unfounded rumors, but at the same time, the fading away memories. And uh, there is no panacea or the quick fix to this. We have to take time, and we have to be very thoroughgoing and cautious in explaining our position. We are prepared to do that. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> uh, thank you very much uh, for clarifying the very difficulty, a difficult challenge that we are confronted. Um, you uh, highlight um, the importance of uh, uh, support and contribution yes. from uh, abroad, uh, for uh, overseas. Uh, would you tell us uh, some significant act or case uh, which uh, help us understand better the uh, key role of that overseas assistance? Well, thank you very much. Indeed, we uh, received tremendous amount of support from overseas. Uh, for everything, we are grateful. But if I may cite one example, in February last year, Prince William of the United Kingdom paid a visit to our prefecture, prefe prefecture of Kuoshima. Prince William not just uh, visited uh, Fukushima, but uh, stayed one night uh, in one of the inns in Fukushima. And uh, Prince wore the traditional cotton kimono in the inn. And uh, together with the Prime Minister Abe and myself, shared a meal together. And that dinner uh, was uh, uh, served using the safe um, delicious agricultural products and safe and the delicious sake Fukushima is proud of. So Prince Fukushima enjoyed Fukushima food and sake together with us and said, commenting that it's all delicious. And it was most moving and impressive in, the, in terms of support uh, and encouragement people of the world have given us. As such, the people uh, from all over the world would come and visit Fukushima and really directly see not only the problems we are faced with, but the um, evidence of the progress we have made in the past five years and going into the sixth year. And to feel it really, that is the greatest support. Okay. In Yamaguchi Prefecture, mm -hmm. no? <laughs> well, in fact, uh, Yamaguchi Prefecture has a very delicious, famous sake of dasai, but at that time it was a dinner in Fukushima, so everything was made in Fukushima, so even Prime Minister Abe did not bring his own sake from his electorate. The floor is open. Uh, please identify yourself uh, when you ask questions. Who will be the first? Yes, please. Uh, Swiss Public Radio. Yeah. Uh. Hi, my name is Curtis, Swiss Public Radio. I just wanted to ask uh, you, Governor, do you think that central government in Tokyo is supporting you enough? Mm. Mm. Hi. Um. So, first of all, the role of the central government, that is vitally important. Let me start by the answer first of all. So in general, we feel that the central government is supporting us. However, in the actual process, there are lots of issues and challenges that emerge. First of all, the nuclear power plant accident that occurred in Japan, it was a scenario that was never imagined in Japan before. So for example, the various radioactive waste that emerged as a result, how to deal with that, the ministry in charge of such a, of an incident that did not actually exist. At the time, I was a deputy governor of Fukushima, and this the radioactive waste that emerged as a result of the disaster, how do we deal with that? 
I wanted to ask advice, but there was no counterpart or actual ministry that we had well, that I could go to or address. So we first of all had the first of all had to set up such a ministry or such an agency, and also in terms of the legislative flame framework that did not exist. So in order to carry out the special measures for decontamination or for the special legislation required for the reconstruction of Fukushima. It took time. It took about a year, one year, two year, and finally, after this time, the system was in place. So, of course, this took time. There was a time lapse. But on the ground, of course, we are still suffering. So, in terms of the speed at which the central government was able to react to the situation, yes, of course, that was an issue at times. However, we are on, it's now five years since the disaster. So whether it be budgetary measures, whether it be the system or the organization in place, it is there. So now we are working closely and collaborating closely with central government and steadily progressing on the road towards reconstruction and revitalization. Yes. Hello, uh, Mr. Chibori. Thank yeah. you for your Thank you. intervention. Um, you, you said you wanted young people. Uh, sorry, I'm sorry, Guy Jackson from Agence France Press, AFB. We, we covered the disaster from our Tokyo base and in the region at the time. Uh, a friend of mine lives in Christchurch in New Zealand, which has also had the earthquake. Yeah. Oh. Uh, their local school has shut. Um, how are you going to stop people leaving the area? And how are you going to get them to come back, as you said you want to, um, if schools are going to shut? Are, are, you, are you managing to keep schools open? Because when people have left an area, the young people leave, the schools shut, and then you have a problem. How are you dealing with that? I'd like to know if I can. That's a very important question. Thank you very much for that. So as we move forward in the evacuated area, it covers 12 uh, local villages and cities. And here, in the process of returning people to the area, of course, there are households with young people. The speed which they, uh, which they come back, such households, it is quite slow. And in reality, looking in the villages and cities of Fukushima, although the uh, evacuation orders have been lifted in such areas, some of the residents who returns first? It is the older people who return first, and it is really the younger people who return last, if they return at all. So this, in this aspect, I think this is something that is going to take time. It is simply something that we're going to keep on working on steadily in each of the households, families. There are lots of different thoughts and thinkings in terms of what they should be doing. So we have to respect their views and carry out our efforts in a steady manner over time. And there was one hope, however, that we felt last year, the past evacuated area, the city of Hironomachi, we were able to open up a new school there. It is the high school called Futaba Gakuen. And before the name of the school, we have actually put in the name Future. And in one year, there are 120 pupils. And uh, that could be uh, accommodated. We were wondering whether 120 children would actually apply. But we actually had applications for 152 children to attend this school. So it's way above what we had examined. And we actually had to set up an extra class and to accommodate the children. And all of these uh, people, yeah, these children, are six-year-olds. They are in junior school. And... But in these evacuated areas, we've been able to open up a new school. And we are, we have the facility to foster these new human resources. So it is something that will certainly take time. But steadily over time, we will one by one restore and open up these schools and ensure that there is an environment in place which can welcome these young people's, young people back to our region. High school. OK. Sorry. That's high school. Yes, Professor Seke. My name is Atsushi Seke from Keio University. Uh, thank you, Governor Uchibori, for your thank splendid you. presentation. And relating to his uh, question, uh, I think uh, education is very important. And we should not let a single child uh, give up uh, his or her education because of uh, earthquake, tsunami, or a nuclear accident. And uh, maybe we need to make every effort to help <coughs> these affected children. And so I'm just curious to know your view on 
like that. Do we need to provide more, for example, generous uh, scholarship for affected children or provide more generous support for the, for example, private schools affected these areas? Well, in fact, in the prefecture of, of Kushima, there were some state schools, whether it be private schools, many of these schools were hit. I mentioned earlier that there were 100,000 evacuees still, and they, and many of these evacuees actually leave the prefecture of Fukushima. They evacuate outside, and then the number of school children actually reduce, drops dramatically. So in terms of schooling, there are lots of people suffering. So with the drop in population, we are in a very particular environment and with the, the school in terms of the management and uh, there is the private schools in particular there are lots of difficulties so we need to ha have a system in place which can ensure that the education system maintains is maintained regardless of the disaster and from Japan and from overseas we are receiving a great deal of support so in that sense Fukushima is receiving a lot of global attention and the children of Fukushima they have uh, a lot of opportunities to come into contact with people from the outside world. And this contact allows them to have lots of new visions. They see themselves within a, the greater world. The Fukushima cities, they see themselves as citizen uh, within the greater world, within of Japan and in the, in the outside environment. So having experienced this, the young people feel that they want to become a responsible adult who can contribute to uh, the world in the future, and many children, I th believe, feel this way. So whether it be from culture, whether it be sports, whether it be academic learning, from such fields, we want to improve the uh, opportunities for children to come into contact with people from the outside, and this is something that we will be looking to pursue. Uh, we wish we would have more time, yes. but uh, time is running out. Um, <coughs> once again, Thank you very much for joining us, uh, sharing your precious ins insight and your time. So please uh, join me thanking him for his excellent presentation.